My name is Maria. I'm from Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, tube development and replacement using Tamar World as a model for Vermilion Evo Devo. And my supervisors are Alistair and Edwina, and my other group as well. And this is part of my pitch. So, like us, many mammals are deaf by adults, and that means that they have two sets of teeth in their lifetime. So, here we have a young human, um, which has, we're, we're, you can see that they have a primary set of teeth, that's our milk teeth. Um, we lose these, and then Dwayne Johnson creeps in at night and steals them. But luckily, we get another set of teeth in our life, um, the permanent for adult dentition, shown here. Um, unluckily, these aren't replaced if they're lost. So, um, how do we define truth, uh, tooth replacement? So, true tooth replacement is not simply one tooth spatially replacing another. There's a developmental um, definition. So, it um, it um, sorry. it. Uh, so, it's a connection between the first generation tooth and its successor. Um, through a special tissue connection. So here we have a developing embryo. If we zoom into its mouth, looking at its upper and lower jaws, there's a band of thickening cells called the dental lamina, and this is what gives rise to developing teeth. So you can think of tooth development almost like a tree growing. So if you think of the growing dental lamina as the ground, it gives rise to um, a little shoot which becomes the um, becomes a tooth. So this is the primary dentition because it has a direct connection to that primary dental lamina. So this, these are your milk teeth. Um, then this primary dentition gives rise to a branch of its own lamina, which is called the secondary dental lamina. And this gives rise to the next generation of teeth. Which are going to, which are our adult dentition, and are going to replace that primary dentition. So then, eventually, that first tooth erupts, and then the second tooth um, pushes out the first and replaces it, and that's how tooth replacement occurs. So it's not too scary. <laughs> so I'm from Australia, and we have marsupials. Um, and they also have teeth. So um, I'm interested in looking at uh, tooth development and replacement in marsupials. So um, just to let you know, uh, marsupials have four types of teeth. Um, um, incisors, incisors in green, premolars in blue, and molars in purple. And they have up to three premolars and four molars. So, uh, marsupial tooth replacement has been, uh, sorry, tooth replacement in marsupials has been observed to happen only to one tooth, weirdly, um, and it always happens at the same uh, tooth position. So it's the third premolar that is replaced in all marsupials um, across the globe, and even extinct species like megafauna decrotodons. So the third premolar always replaces the third deciduous premolar um, physically in that position. But does this happen um, in a true developmental sense? Um, some people think yes, and but others um, don't think that there is true replacement occurring in marsupial species. And especially, um, we don't really know what happens in macropodids. So macropodids are what you know as kangaroos and wallabies, and they are also assumed to have this one tooth replacement event. So we see a tooth pushed out, and we see another tooth um, rise, uh, arise in its place. Um, however, it, the development of this group of animals is understudied, and there's no complete developmental series of its, to of its teeth. So, um, one of the projects I'm working on was to make a 3D model of macropod tooth development to look at the temporal and spatial patterns and to try and confirm whether this true tooth replacement event occurs and what the evolutionary implications um, would be. 
So introducing to Australia's next top model organism, <laughs> the Tama Wallaby, Macrobus Eugenii. Um, so, why it's a better model than, say, a mouse? Mice don't have two generations of teeth, they only have one set of teeth, and uh, so they don't have a tooth replacement event that you can study, while Tama Wallabies um, have been observed to have this. And it's assumed that they replace that DP3 with a P3. So um, to document the development pattern, I used 12 fresh tissue samples and seven dry um, skull samples from the museum. Um, and I looked at from zero days, so it's literally born out of the uterus that day, crawls up to the couch, and then I <laughs> take it um, up to 380 days old when the last tooth appears. So um, now I've been able to observe the entire tooth development and the placement pattern of this species. And so um, I use the stain and scan method to make these 3D models and to stain the soft tissue specimens in lugol solution. I don't know if you've heard of the DICT method that's coming about. Um, so it differentially stains soft tissue so you can CT scan them and actually see the structures in 3D. So I scan them using um, micro CT at X Radio and the Australian Synchrotron, and then I reconstructed 3D models using the Visum, and also to make sure what I think I could see in a 3D scan is that structure I confirmed using, using histology as well. So voila, we have a 3D model of to, uh, teeth developing in a Tama Wallaby skull. So. Um, I don't want to go through all the teeth with you today, I just want to focus on the premolars and trying to capture that tooth replacement event. So it does tooth replacement occur in the Tamar Wallaby. So we're just going to have a look at the two deciduous premolars that the species has, called DP2 and DP3. So, so here you can see the primary dental lamina, that ground that the teeth develop from, and here we have a bud of the DP2 and a bud of the DP3, but weirdly there's no successional lamina or that branch that should be budding off the DP3, and instead we see a P3 developing also from the primary dental lamina. Um, so the DPs are the first generation of teeth and the P is the second generation of teeth. And you can see this through time. This develops on a long stalk and then eventually becomes that um, the premolar that will replace this deciduous premolar. Sorry, I should have said this is in the upper jaw. And also in the lower jaw, we see exactly the same um, developmental pattern. So the P3 developing from the primary dental lamina not from a successional lamina, from the tooth that it replaces, all the way through to a mineralized tooth. <laughs> so, what this means is that there's actually no true tooth replacement developmentally in the Tama wallaby. Um, because the P3 develops from the primary dental lamina, it makes it primary dentition. So, it's the same generation as the other tooth that it replaces. In that, um, the DP3 never develops that secondary lamina, um, so the P3 is not a true successor, and um, therefore there's, it's rather tooth uh, displacement than tooth replacement. So you can see clearly the difference that they both arise from the same lamina rather than a secondary lamina. And um, now that I know what these the structure looks like, I went back and reviewed literature, and actually um, this has been debated for over 120 years, where we've seen um, from 1893 a study on Tamil wallaby tooth development, um, and they noted that they think they thought that the P3 also developed between the deciduous premolars from the primary dental lamina, and it's almost identical to my um, the morphology I get from my scans. And again, um, in the 70s, you can see identical structures. Sorry. So 
that peak through developing on a long stalk from the primary dental lamina and the same thing in my scans. So that's a 2D slice through the, the scan. Um, and then even more interestingly, I started to look at other kangaroo wallaby species and the same things we found in other kangaroos and wallabies. So this is Macrophus giganteus, um, the grey kangaroo, and you can see the same P3 um, stalk structure in uh, 19, uh, 1893, the same thing again in the 60s, that match identically to the Tamil wallaby pattern. Um, so this has been observed in at least five other kangaroo wallaby species, if not more. And this may mean that it's, um, it's unique it's unique to the macropodids, but um, further, further um, research has, uh, sorry, further review of the literature has shown that maybe there's no tooth, tooth replacement in other groups of marsupials as well. So, some, so in North American marsupials, it seems consistently that they have true tooth replacement, but there's arguments about whether it happens in desert such as uh, Tassie devil or paramelomorphs um, such as bandicoots, um, but it seems that it's not happening in kangaroos and wallabies. So um, this means we have to change our um, concept of whether of the generalization that marsupials have true tooth replacement. The tamil wallaby does not, for sure, and it seems that macrophodids don't fit this conventional view either, and that other marsupials might not too. So, um, is this phylogenetically linked? Um, is it, uh, did, uh, was there a common ancestor that had true tooth replacement and then split between these groups? So we need to re-examine um, tooth replacement in marsupials. And uh, also, this has implications for how we look at um, long-term marsupial and mammalian evolution, uh, because fossil is just a snapshot in time and you just see a row of teeth. and um, now we know that it might not be that tooth that we thought we saw, um, so we need to re-examine the fossil record as well. Um, and finally, the, there's one question that remains within marsupials, to replace or not to replace Betty. Um, thank you very much. i um, just like to thank um, my, uh, my, sorry, my Evo Walk Lab students about the we practice Melbourne Uni, the Renfrew Lab for donating the Tunnel Wallabies, um, Army, the Miglin Lab for helping me with um, developmental stuff, and you can follow me on Twitter, and that's my lab group as well, Evan Seaver Lab. Thank you very much. <laughs>